Um, uh, thanks for the uh, invitations uh, for this talk, and uh, I will uh, bring you to uh, um, something is uh, what, what we invent in, in Hong Kong, and then uh, bring it to the clinical uh, you know usage. Um, different from the uh, you know the, from Dennis Low, you know this is marvelous, you know. So we are just at the beginning, and then we are also just learning how to do that. So uh, actually, I will uh, tell you about the story of the Hand of Hope. This is what we meant in the Hong Kong, and then the, what we have uh, put forward. And then the, I'm from the, the Chinese Youth uh, Biomedical Engineering. So biomedical engineering, actually, is, uh, we integrate the medicines, biology, engineering all together. So it's a mixture. So virtually, we, we need to learn everything. And um, in the BME, actually, uh, we have uh, biomedical regenerative medicines, biomolecular imaging, and also so we can build robots and sensors. And um, how can we achieve all this research in Hong Kong? Actually, it's uh, slightly fortunate than Dennis, maybe. So we got some funding from the GRF, so we have some basic research. And then uh, recently, we also have this uh, ITF fund, and that is our robot hands is built by the ITF fund. And then, the, so that's what is happens, and also I have uh, the whole team with me. But first, we have uh, an objective. What we want to do if we have all this funding is uh, in Hong Kong, if you go to a hospital, we can see a lot of stroke patients suffer. You know, um, they, they will need a lot of rehabilitations. They have uh, suffer and their family also suffer. So how to make the survivals getting better? So normally they have this hemorrhagia, and then the, so the hand and the leg cannot move, you know, as they want. So can they help them to move their hands and walk better? This is our aim. So we have the physiotherapist, occupational therapist, but can we do it better with the robotics? So this is what we built. And then the, actually uh, recently, we also get the Jockey Club support our technology to launch in the community. So the Jockey Club is generous. They uh, have this three year programs. They help us to launch our technology that built in our lab to 40 uh, center in Hong Kong. So it's, uh, in Hong Kong, everywhere, you know, no matter in Hong Kong Islands and the uh, new territories or Kowloon Sai, actually you have a uh, different center can uh, use those technology. So include the hand of hopes for the hand movements training, uh, exoskeleton for the ankle robots for walking, stair, and also some of the uh, cycling device for the you no know, cognitive training. So today I will look at the, the hand of hopes. So when we start, actually, uh, this is also our, uh, our study in our lab. So we are not just build robot, we also uh, study the animal. So we make the stroke rat, okay, make the rat become stroke. Then we look at the literature, look at the other people, they say it's, uh, training the rat to run is uh, good after stroke, you know. So we do the same things, we train the rat to run, run after that, you know. And then we dissect the rat, and then see the, what's the rat will be happening. So what we see, the right color on the screen is the infant volume from the brain. So we train the rats after seven days, you know, and then we look at the dissections of the brain tissues. Then what we got is a surprise. The infant volume is bigger than we don't train the rat. But then we look at the function of the rat, they uh, perform better. So what's happening? They can perform better in the functions, but they have uh, more brain damage in the brain. Then we think about, can we do better than this, you know? The brain tissue didn't damage, but at the same time, can we cope better? Then we look at the patients, then we look at our training, and we figure out one thing, okay, can we do something as uh, the rat like to do? So they would like to do exercise, at the same time, don't damage the brain. Before, we just used the treadmill to train the rat, you know, to force the rat to run. So how to encourage the rat to run by itself? So what should we do? Give some food, you know, but actually, after stroke, they don't like to eat, okay? So what else we can do? Actually, the rat like to run in the wheel, you know, just like the pet. So we just design the wheel. That's it, the, the rat like to run, they can run any time. And then we do that. So we just give the wheel, and then the rat run on it, and then what's happening? Then we look at the data, the top line, actually is the ones the rat run on the wheel, okay? So it's, uh, what we need to do, give the training the red light to do, and then the, um, they have a better functions, and also the brain damage have been reduced. Then we also look at uh, why is it caused this uh, phenomenon. So we look at the neurotrophic factors. So which, uh, we call the BDNF, 
So we can we see the Hugo campus have a huge increase in the real training. Then on the other side, we look at this uh, stress level. We find it is okay, the treatment training, really stressful. But the real training is very good. So we realize if we can build the robots that help the patients to willing to do the training, the brain like it, then this is the best training. Not the trivial training, not the robots that force the patients to walk or use the hands. Then we look at the designs, and then you can see on the screens, we come a long way, you know, from the earlier uh, 2008, and then we use the German systems. We build our own, at that time I was in PolyU, we call this uh, PolyJ bot, and then we build a hand of hopes, and now we have different designs and even the 3D printing uh, robot hands. So, so what's the design look like? How to motivate the patient to move? We detect what the patient wants to do. So after the hand has been paralyzed, we still can detect some signal from the muscle, from the brain. Then we use it to drive the robot. So the robot is not passive. Actually, it's controlled by the humans, just like the Iron Man. No, they want to move, they will move. Okay, if the patient don't want to move or won't move in the wrong way, actually the robot will not do any actions. Then we prove it into the clinical settings. So we build a robot, big tower, and then uh, we prove it. So it's on the first paragraph, you can see, if we have this robot together with the intention from the humans, actually we have better recovery, clinically we prove it. And in other groups, is we just use the robot to do this passive training, we believe it saves a lot of time for the therapist, actually it doesn't help the patient to recover. You know, we have this three months follow up, after training we find this no effect. So, Bring interactions with the robot, it will help the stroke uh, recovery. Then at the times, you always think about, okay, we have this uh, big robot, but the patient still is uh, not happy with our robot because we cannot train the hand and the wrist. When we look around at that times, no uh, good designs in the world, then what we can do? Build our own, okay? So it's, uh, this is the one, we got the ITF and build it. And then, um, so how it works? Actually, we have different uh, mechanical designs, together with our uh, high amplifier in the electronics, can detect the muscle signals. Then the good news is uh, we prove this is successful, and then uh, we actually launch it and commercialize it and uh, license to a company called the Real Robotics in the Science Park. And then now this company have launched this product in the 30 countries, and then they also get this uh, medical device uh, you know, the, uh, uh, certificate. And one important thing is the patents. Actually, when we designed this, Hand of hopes. We found the patents. You know, how do you find patents? I learned how to write patents. So the so one thing is learn how to write patents at the early stage when you are the scientist and the engineer. So actually I teach the patents in the school, uh, in the university right now. So it's, uh, this is the design and then you can see that uh, we can help the patients to grab different objects. And then the robot hand is actually controlled by the intentions. So this is the patients. We can see, let's see if I can put on. So this is um, how the patients uh, use their own hands, cannot grab the spongy, uh, also cannot be visit. But use the robot hands, she so use the intention from the muscles, and then she can grab and release it. This is for training, to train the brain. So after training, what's happening? We can pick off the robot hand, because the brain already learned how to use the hand again. So we can show you the, um, this video. The lower part is the patient hands. So we're difficult to do this uh, lateral pinch. After 20 sessions of training, around one and a half months, so you can do that by herself with the robotic. And then the three months later, the brain just learn it and then uh, keep doing that. So this is, we can see the, how we integrate the, the things together. So if we can do it in the earlier stroke, like this one, the left side is affected. Okay, very poor. After 10 sessions of training, around 20 minutes in the hospital, much better. Then after 20 sessions. So you, if you are a rehab doctor, you have physicians, you know, and uh, PTOT, they notice there's something they haven't seen it in the hospital before. Then the, we run the clinical trial, definitely we see the dramatic effect in the hand functions and recovery. So nowadays, there's a lot of people start to invent different robot hands and then the 
for the stroke rehabilitation. So actually, we can from the uh, you know from the lab, and actually we can bring the technology to the whole world, and then to see the how the training can be different from the previous. So now what we can do is uh, we can use the brain wave. So we decode the brain wave, and then to control the robot hands. So we can use the AI or that technology. We can do that. So let's see. So this is the EEG signal. You have to encephalogram. You can also, uh, from the MRI, you can see how the brain learn all these tasks and techniques. And uh, after the robot hand training, actually, we can see the, how the brain have learned all these new tasks. And then uh, this is some of the, the recent study. We see the, the motor area have been changed to other area, maybe on the, on the affected side, but just uh, near to the uh, lesions. And then they can pick up the whole task again. That region, maybe originally, is for the leg. But now they use it to control the hand, okay? So the brain is very uh, plastic, you know, they can uh, learn different new tasks. So the, this is some more the experiments. We can see how the brain has been learned and then we adapt to the new world. So that's why I want to share with you. This is my robot hand. If you have time, please come and see it. Okay, thank you very much.